John here from Mask on Sire with more IAPA 2022 coverage. And of course, we, we have Asif from Looney Times. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, too. So, this is your first year here at IAPA? It is our first year. And how has your experience been so far? Well, day two, I think it has been very good. Mm -hmm. uh, I think on the first day when the gates opened, it was like a tsunami with people just coming in and saying, oh, mascots. And you know, when they look around uh, our booth and look at Pegasus out there mm -hmm. uh, and our mascot, there was a lot of excitement out there. And I think even with COVID, uh, you know, things had really gone down quite a bit. So now that everything is opening up, there is a lot more interest in, in the mascot and events uh, happening. So touch wood so far, no complaints. Good to hear. Now, tell us a little bit about your company, like where, where it started, the origins, and uh, how long has it been in business for? Yeah, absolutely. We started off in 1996 um, in Toronto, Canada, and uh, I've been involved with this company for the last seven years. Uh, I would say with us, we deal in Canada with some of the biggest brands, uh, be it Kraft, be it Kellogg's, Mars, uh, Home Depot, Dairy Queen, uh, we not only manage the mask or make the mascots, but we also manage it for them. So we store the mascots, we do their events, uh, we clean the mascots, we make sure that they are in top condition, and then they go back and hibernate at, at our facilities out there. So that is one, one part of our business. The other part of our business is, as you can see, we also do plush manufacture. So a lot of our clients come back and say, making the big mascots, then they come and say, hey, what about the small stuffies? And that's how we got into brush manufacturing about six years ago. Amazing. And we have never looked back after that. Um, wow. So whether it is corporate clients, we do a lot of schools, universities, uh, sports teams. So very recently, last year, uh, we got Fox Sports and they started a new uh, league, the USFL. And we were contracted, I believe this is the first in the history of any league, where one mascot company is doing all the mascots for all the eight teams. And we did it, they were super happy, they have come back again this year, and hopefully we'll be making more mascots as they expand the teams. Amazing. Now, obviously with a lot of the companies that, you know, mm -hmm. have uh, been around, uh, COVID, you know, was a big, big, big thing the last three years. Mm -hmm. um, what were some of the challenges that uh, Luton Times really kind of had to really tackle with? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I, I think COVID has, upset practically every manufacturing, uh, mascot manufacturer, I guess, across the world. Uh, we, mascots are basically fun, they are events, and nothing was happening. So, our production was stopped, um, when we restarted it, and things were coming back to normal, there were issues with people, because a lot of people changed careers when they had more time to sit at home, and get other, other education and change the line. The other aspect was supply chain, which practically impacted not only just the mascot industry, the entire world. And when you look at something like that, we had issues with foam. I know other mascot companies had to, again, lay off employees because they didn't have foam. Luckily for us, at Looney Times, we had really good relations with our suppliers. We actually got foam transported from the US into Canada. So touch wood, we did not get impacted. Was it scary? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because at a certain moment of time, we were not sure whether we would have enough material to even you know, go through it. Yeah. But I think after COVID, the last one year has been absolutely fantastic. So you uh, feel it's kind of like rebounding back it up is, again? It is absolutely. I, I don't think so. We can even call it rebounding. I don't think so. There is a word to describe like whatever business we used to do earlier mm -hmm. and I think this might be across the industry because I'm talking to other mascot manufacturers also and they're all in the same boat. They are completely overwhelmed and majority of the clients are coming back and saying, hey, I want this yesterday. Whereas our lead times are three to four months now. And that is, you know, something which we used to do in eight weeks, now is 16 to 20 weeks. So yes, COVID, played a very uncertain, gave us very a lot of uncertainty uh, at our business. But once things are coming back to normal, I think we are back to where we were, we are much 
better off than what we were pre-COVID. Gotcha. Now, with a lot of your mascots, obviously we have this lovely, uh, lovely character right here. Do you kind of specialize in just like the furred type, or do you do like any inflatables? Do you do any kind of like uh, vacuum form, or is this kind of like what your specialty is? Uh, we actually do everything. We don't do inflatables. Okay. Uh, but with respect to any of the mascots, uh, we might even do you know things with molds. Um, we might use fur, fleece, all the different kind of materials out there which are available in the market or which the client wants. So very recently we had a company in, in Los Angeles which wanted different kinds of mascots uh, including animatronics. So we, we actually gave them even that aspect of it which we actually luckily have it on display out here at the trade show. So irrespective of what the client wants, they can dream it, we can make it. And that is what has been our, our philosophy all throughout. And I, and I like your guys' work because you don't see a lot of some of the mascots that involve like lights or you have ones that do have like a digital, uh, digital mm -hmm. face. And it kind of adds a little bit of a pizzazz to that character instead yeah. of just being just the, the character by itself. So I think that really kind of sets you guys apart from right. a lot of the other uh, mascot makers that are out there. Yes. Um, now you were saying, of course, you were, uh, you kind of, uh, developed this all in Canada. Now I've heard you're friends with some other uh, friends of ours that uh, we have interviewed, uh, Creations J, uh, JCT and uh, uh, International Mascot. Yes. So how, how did that uh, that kind of friendship start out? I think with, uh, with, uh, within our industry and you know, uh, if people might know about it, Canada is a hotbed of mascot manufacturing. And I believe outside of Japan, uh, I think that is the mascot capital of the world. You will have the highest concentration of mascot companies in one country, and especially in the Toronto region, a lot more out there. Mm -hmm. um, despite the fact that you know there's so much competition within the industry, whether it is IMC or JCT or any other mascot company, we I, I remember meeting them seven years ago when I bought Looney Times and I came to IAPA, I bought the Looney Times in September, I was here in November, uh, and I met IMC, I met JCD, I made friends with them, and they become a kind of mentor to me. And they said, oh, you, because I'm not from the mascot world, I come from a corporate world, and that is where, you know, there was a steep learning curve, but mm -hmm. thanks to them, you know, they actually helped uh, in, in a lot of ways to me to guide me in the right direction. Uh, you know, how to deal with suppliers and, you know, where can you find other suppliers where, you know, if you get on, stuck on certain other things. We, even with respect to making certain things, I used to call up Joel and say, hey, can you give me some ideas how, how we can do that? And he was always forthcoming. Uh, we never ever thought about, you know, oh, he's going to take away my business. There is so much business out there for everyone that we all can grow together and we can all still be friends. And so, you guys are have all something different. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, there are things that we do, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I have IMC who are out here, even at the trade show, I had a few people come report from IMC saying, hey, they need plush, or they need something specific out here, or go to Looney Times. And that works vice versa for us. So it's kind so, of like they're directing the traffic right to you. Absolutely. And, Amazing. And, 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 that, and that is something which I do not find in a lot of other industries happening. Some uh, of them can be very just kind of like, they kind of stay to themselves. It is. And I think that has also got to do a lot with the number one, the industry, and number two, the people who are running. Yeah. Uh, and that goes a lot to the character of those, those people. And that is something which I guess mascot industry itself is supposed to be to spread happiness, fun, smiles, and that comes right from the top. And that is what, you know, we are walking the top. Amazing. Yeah. Now, over the last 25 years, uh, I know it's kind of like picking your favorite child. Is there any particular <laughs> project that, you, uh, that you've enjoyed working with or were like really excited to, to tackle? Oh, I, I think there would be a lot and if I, if I name one or two companies, I'll be very, you know, biased, and I don't want to upset anyone. Uh, but if I look at, you know, some of the best work that that we have done, um, and you know, not not to say that others are not good, um, close to my heart would always be our own mascot. Uh, you know, I'll be biased, and you know, when when you look at 
what the artist impression is and to translate that into into the actual mascot itself a lot of time and energy has gone into it um, fine tuning it with no time limits because we wanted to get everything perfect mm -hmm. um, you know when we even look at some of the recent mascots we have done for example the hogo company which uh, we have we have just displayed a few out here we did six mascots for them some of them are like giant like if i had to get them out here mm -hmm. i have to have a truckload like six, all six mascots because one of them is like a rancor oh, wow. it's really massive and huge uh, we incorporated uh, led lights into the fabric itself and that is something which is completely new um, you know you have seen led lights in mascot or led screens out there but to do something within the fabric is something very unique and different uh, even when you look at animatronics, you see a lot of animatronics which goes on, which have moving parts and everything. But to coat something and have eyes and mouth moving is slightly different. And that is something which we have been able to do and bring into the mascot world. Mm -hmm. uh, there are others who have also done it. And, you know, we might not be the first one, but at least there is changing and the clients themselves are asking a lot more out of it. So, Amazing. yes, my favorite will be there, but there are others which have done, you know, USFL are another mascots that we did, mm -hmm. uh, which were good. Um, and we did it in a record time. And that's one of the reasons why I like it, because my entire team pulled everything, all eight mascots, in eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And that was completely amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Now, uh, for my, my final uh, thought, um, what do you feel is your path going into 2023? Like, where do you find Looney Times kind of heading into the future? Wow. Uh, I know. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I think a lot of the things, and as coming into IAPA, uh, when we are meeting all the different clients and their requirements, what I am seeing is a lot of them asking for something more innovative, something which is out of the box. And I think over the next, at least for 2023, that is where me and my team are going to be, you know, focusing a lot more on. Uh, when they came and they looked at the Hogo mascot out here, they said, hey, that's really cool. I want something. Can you quote something very specific for me? Can it be colorful? Yeah, we need to go and investigate all of that and bring, bring that in, uh, into, into the fold. The other aspect which is also very interesting out there is that they are now not confined to traditional mascot. Uh, so they just don't want a bear. Or, or a line. They're saying, I want to go completely bold. I want something very different. They look at this mascot and say, oh, can we do something like this? Is this for sale? I said, no, it's not for sale. <laughs> uh, but, you know, so that is where we are going to focus on. A lot more on the 3D printing side. So what we did this is also through 3D printing. So we will be incorporating a lot more on Looney Times on that front, on more on the technology side of it to bring mascots a lot more on the higher end. Yeah, because I've seen a lot of uh, mascot um, makers start to utilize 3D printing, and I think it, it's really opened up the gateway for the more creative side because some things you just can't do practical, yeah. and I think 3D printing has come in to really almost kind of like save the day and really yeah. kind of bring all that together. Absolutely. And this is a prime, a great prime example of that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, Good. thank you so much, Asif, thank for you. taking the time out of your day. Uh, again, we'll put some more info about Looney Times up on the screen. But yeah, this is John from Mascot Insider here at IEPA 2022. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our lovely YouTube channel. Hit that like and don't forget to ring that bell for more notifications on more videos.